Welcome to Core Cutting Today for September 7th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now. And with it being Saturday, we take a look at the um, biggest stories in the past week and answer some of your questions about them. Now, if you want to learn more about these stories in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story so you can rebound for yourself. Leave us a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you are new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Real quick uh, reminder, the top five best cord cutting deals for September 2019. I have them all listed in the post in the show notes down below. Great discounts on Roku's, Fire TVs, and more. So check that out if you're looking for a disc, um, great deal on a cord cutting service. All right, also there is uh, our Roku's buyer guide we updated. So Roku just announced a new Roku soundbar with a Roku player built into it. So we posted a brand new Roku buyer's guide where you can break down uh, which Roku's right for you because there's now eight different Roku streaming players on the market. Finding the right one for you could be a little bit confusing. We get a lot of emails about this. So we sat down, we broke out each of the eight uh, Roku streaming players out there so you can decide which ones are right for you and go from there. Now, if you have any suggestions on your favorite Roku streaming player and why, leave us a comment and let us know. But if you want to see our breakdown, link in the show notes below. All right, first story up of the day. And this is one we covered over the weekend. AT&T is confusing AT&T TV and AT&T TV now, um, creating mass confusion. This is a story we ran over at Core Cars News last weekend. We talked about it earlier this week. And it comes out to AT&T doing things like in the description of the uh, new new DirecTV Now app, which is now renamed to AT&T TV app, talking about how DirecTV Now is becoming AT&T TV, which isn't true. Well, the app is, the service is actually becoming AT&T TV Now, completely different. One has contracts and hidden fees and everything. One is contract free and for the most part doesn't have hidden fees. Now, an update, AT&T has followed up with Core Cars News and said, hey, they have seen this issue. They are going to correct the wording on the apps and some of their marketing to make this more clear to remove confusion over this. So the good news is they're addressing it. The bad news is it's still very confusing. For example, a lot of people, even when the story said, no, DirecTV Now is becoming AT&T TV. That's the new name of DirecTV Now. That's not fully true. Yeah, the app is being renamed that, but the service is actually AT&T TV Now if you want what was DirecTV Now. So this is very confusing, they are addressing it, but it still doesn't fully remove it. Many people had asked us, what's the difference? Because you had DirecTV Now and DirecTV in the past, wasn't that confusing? I would say not so much, because DirecTV Now was a streaming service, and DirecTV um, was a satellite service. Big difference. AT&T TV is a sat streaming version of their satellite service, basically. It, uh, DirecTV Now, now called AT&T TV Now, is a, also a streaming service, but without the contract and without some of the um, hidden fees of AT&T TV. This makes it much more confusing because they also use the same app, where in the past DirecTV had its app and DirecTV Now had its app. So I can definitely see why people are confused about that. Hopefully AT&T continues to address the confusion over this, updating the disclaimers on the uh, descriptions of the app definitely helps. Let me know, were you confused by this? Do you still find it confusing? We haven't even talked about at t TV or Watch TV, which is a completely separate service with a completely separate app. That definitely is very confusing. So let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, Amazon for the next story of the day is reportedly looking at adding live TV. We reported on this earlier this week. Amazon has live TV plans um, for their IMDb TV service. Now, a lot of people ask, will this be like ESPN? Are we going to get ESPN and stuff added to IMDb TV? Probably not. This is probably going to be more like content you'll find on Pluto, the Roku channel, Stir and more. And according to the Wall Street Journal story, which broke this, it is pretty much an effort to compete with the other free services that not only offer on demand, but also offer live um, feeds of different channels like ABC News, Weather Nation, and more. Now, I do love this. I do love the competition, bring more of these in. Hopefully some that weren't 
on any other service. We'd love to see like MeTV maybe partner up with Amazon to offer a free stream with the MeTV affiliates and locals. So I'd love to see this become a reality. Hopefully they can do to move down that path. Nothing set in stone. This comes from a report from the Wall Street Journal which has a pretty good track record of breaking this news on topics like this. So leave us a comment. Let me know what you would like to see here. But unfortunately, for everybody excited that this may include free cable networks like the Weather Channel, Live, or ESPN. That's not really, I think, what Amazon's doing here. This seems to be more focused on adding um, free public content like NBC News, ABC News, CBS News as free feeds to IMDb TV to compete with the Roku channel, uh, Pluto TV, et cetera. All right, uh, next story up of the day in our recap of the week. Some Disney Channel content will be moving to Disney Plus. So Disney Plus posted an FAQ on their website recently that broke down some of the biggest um, questions people had. Not a whole lot of new information, but one of the big interesting points here was in an FAQ titled, is anything being removed from the Disney Channel and moving to Disney Plus? Disney said yes. Some legacy content will be moving over past seasons and more from the Disney Channel to Disney Plus. This probably means back catalog content will be moving over. In the past, you could use your cable login to access Disney, Disney content through like Disney Now. That may not be fully true in the future. You still will get content there. There still probably will be um, current seasons of stuff, but the back catalog will be moving over. This is very much in line with what Amazon did in the past where they took um, ESPN content, moved it over to ESPN Plus that used to be in the ESPN app if you logged in, or even on like Hulu or Netflix with like the 30 for 30 content, which is now pretty much exclusive, at least back catalog stuff, to the ESPN Plus service. So definitely keep a close eye on this. Very interested to see how this develops or how they mature this, um, this plan here. What exactly moves over? Will we still get classic movies and TV shows on like Freeform? Will that still be happening? Or is that all gonna be going over to Disney Plus? Leave me your predictions. We just don't know. Disney has kind of said more details to come as we get closer to launch. So we're gonna to have to wait and see what Disney announces as we approach the launch of Disney Plus, which is only about two months from now. It'll be here before we even know it. All right, next story up of the day, Fubo TV is raising the price of its sports add-on for new subscribers. Now, good news is if you're a Fubo TV sports add-on subscriber already, no price change. But new subscribers will now pay $10.99 instead of the previous $8.99. But the NFL Red Zone is coming back. So if you want it for NFL Red Zone, it's now in that sports add-on again this year. But it costs a little bit more money. A lot of people are asking, does this mean I will be paying more? If you were already a subscriber to the sports add-on, yes, you will pay. You will not pay more. If you had Fubo TV but you didn't have the sports add-on and you wanted to add it, yes, you will pay more. So keep that in mind. It's um, an ever-growing, um, changing world. They're adding more channels. It's uh, more channels now than when they originally launched the sports add-on, and that's how they're kind of justifying charging. Um, $2 more. So let me know what you think if you have any questions on that. Um, and let me know if you were a Fubo TV sports add-on customer. Do you like it? What do you think of the value of it being at $10.99? Is it worth it? Yes, you get info. Um, Red Zone. But what about the other content? Does that make it all worth it? Let me know. And lastly, um, for the stories of today, we got some other stuff to cover. Uh, Sling TV is removed, has removed the Fox Regional Sports Networks after an extended blackout. So we're over a month now of Fox Regional Sports Networks being blacked out on Sling TV and Dish. Um, Dish does not seem to be backing down, but Sinclair now owns it. So Sinclair for about a week now has owned the Fox Regional Sports Networks. And there's still hope here just because Sling TV has removed the Fox Regional Sports Networks from their guide, doesn't mean a deal couldn't still be reached. It's very possible now that Sinclair owns them, but it doesn't happen overnight. These kind of talks don't just, oh, Sinclair bought them, let's sign a deal and get it done tomorrow morning. These things take time. Even if they agree on it, you got your lawyers and their lawyers and back and forth on minute details of the contract and more. So I wouldn't throw in the towel and say, no, there's no hope of Fox Regional Sports Networks coming back to Sling TV. But Sling TV did say, hey, for the cost that they want for that channel, 
not that many people watch it. And they kind of said, hey, we don't want to have to pass along the cost of Fox Regional Sports Networks to a bunch of people who don't watch it in exchange so that a relatively, in their words, small number of people will watch it. So let me know what you think. Are you excited that Sling is pushing back? Are you upset? The good thing about core cutting is you can be on another service in about five minutes. That's a great thing of core cutting. No contracts, no lock-ins. You can move anytime you want. So leave us a comment on all these stories. Let me know. A few things to keep an eye on for next week. Apple on the, on the 10th will have a big event. Now we are fully expecting new iPhones, iPads, and MacBook Pros. But growing, growing drumbeat, growing rumors that are becoming more and more credible that there may be a new Apple TV announcement. Now, a little word of caution, a little hold on this though. Apple has a history of doing an event like this and then right after it, announcing another event to announce at, like an Apple TV or the Apple TV Plus service. Now, I would expect at least maybe to get another trailer for Apple TV Plus, maybe some additional details. We will have full coverage over at corecarsnews.com, live blogging it, then I'll be live here um, on YouTube after the event to give you a full recap. But if you um, are interested, keep a close eye on it. They will stream the event live, and we'll have all that information over at corecarsnews.com on the, on the 10th. But I do find it likely that we will get a new Apple TV. I find it more likely than not now than that there may be an announcement next week. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if they don't. If we have to wait a few more days to get the big announcement, um, maybe they'll announce it at the beginning of October. Or maybe they'll announce it at the end of September. We'll have to wait and see. But if it happens, Core Curry's News will be there keeping a close eye on it. One thing interesting though is the new Apple TV is a far improved processor. We talked about this earlier this week. That kind of leads me to think this won't be the cheap discount one that they've talked about. Could there be another? Could there be two Apple TVs announced this year? Yeah, we could still get that discount Apple TV everybody wants and the high-end Apple TV um, with the new advanced processor, maybe for the new gaming system or gaming service that they're launching, Apple Arcade. We'll have to wait and see. But leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these stories. Let me know what you would like to see in a new Apple TV. Again, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It helps us a lot. Check back on Monday for more core cutting today. Take care, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend and be safe out there.